Hello and welcome to Strelkomania. Today I'm back on campus in my group's research lab since we've recently acquired a new composite fiber toy. On that topic, I'm sure a lot of you have recently seen Nathan Builds Robots' new videos on the downside of composite fiber materials, specifically carbon fiber. The new system in our lab prints mostly a 916 carbon fiber based material called onyx and also prints continuous fibers within the part. We did have a service technician come in yesterday to set up our machine and I did ask if there's really any concern of fiber transfer while handling the raw filament as well as parts after printing and basically I was told that my concern wasn't really a concern. The Mark Forge filaments are supposedly manufactured differently than the hobbyist grade materials but today under the microscope we will find out by comparing this onyx material and its fiber transfer to the PLA carbon fiber that came with my X1C. PLA carbon fiber is a carbon fiber reinforced PLA where the base material is polylactic acid, a polymer derived from cornstarch and sugarcane I'm sure that most of you are familiar with. In this analysis, we're assuming the diameter of each individual chopped carbon fiber ranges between 5 to 10 micrometers or greater. The Bamboo Lab PLA carbon fiber is our hobbyist grade filament sitting at $44.99 Canadian for a one kilogram spool. Taking a look at the safety data sheet, you can see that the filament is 90 to 95% PLA and 5 to 10% carbon fiber, and this is percent by weight. When we look at this filament under the microscope, keep this 5 to 10 for the fiber content in mind. Editing Dora here, in this video, we're not going to be comparing mechanical properties of the filaments. I've linked data sheets below if you're curious, but we're focusing more on fiber containment and transfer of fibers of both of these filaments. For a direct comparison to the onyx, I would have ideally used the Bamboo Labs PA6 carbon fiber filament that they offer, but this video is just what I immediately had on hand, which was the onyx material in my lab and then the Bamboo Lab PLA carbon fiber that came with my X1C when I bought it. Back to the video. For the PLA close-up, I printed the Prusa Calibration Tree Frog using default X1C settings. I'm also looking at the raw filament right off the spool. Starting off with a filament close-up of the Bamboo Lab PLA carbon fiber. Wow, this is a close-up of the bamboo carbon fiber and you can really see the fibers in the material. That's crazy. Oh, wow going to snap the end of the filament. You can already see the little fibers that are sticking out. Here's another look at the broken end of the CF filament. You can already see the fiber transfer on my fingertips as well. I think it's really interesting how well the microscope actually captures the fibers embedded into the filament even though both the fiber and the PLA is black. Obviously the material whitened a bit because I fatigued it by snapping it. Still a really educating shot. To take the close-up shots in this video, I used a fairly cheap USB microscope and I made a very useful stand for mine as it didn't come with one or a base. If you'd like to see my design and build process for how I made the stand, lucky for you, I've got a video. It's linked up in the cards and down below and I definitely recommend you check it out after this one. Happy watching! Now here are some close-up shots of that tree frog print I mentioned again in the bamboo lamp PLA carbon fiber and you can still to some extent see the the individual fibers in some of the beads. The filament itself has a very rough texture. 
this is a zoom in on the tree frog foot and you can see with my cursor I'm circling some of the fibers. I do apologize for the quality of the microscope footage in some of the shots, especially these high contrast ones. Now to test the transfer of fibers after printing, I rubbed my index finger on the body of the frog as you can see and then took a closer look at my fingertip and we definitely see fibers. It's actually a lot worse than I was expecting. You can't really feel the fibers on your fingertip, so it doesn't feel like they're there, but there's quite a lot. I rubbed my two fingers together to see how those fibers would transfer, and they did transfer as you can see, along with other dust and debris. Now I'm trying to wipe the fibers off with a wet wipe. It didn't really do anything, as you can see the smaller chopped pieces are still on my fingertip. I rubbed the wet wipe on the surface of the frog to get better contrast between the white wet wipe and the fibers and as you can see they're still pretty embedded in there. There's quite a bit of fiber transfer from the PLA. Again these fibers aren't something you feel but after seeing this I can't forget that they're there. Here's another close-up look at the filament again, very rough surface. You can see the bite marks from the AMS system on this one. The Onyx filament by Mark Forged is a microcarbon fiber filled nylon 6 material. It is under assumption that the fibers here are smaller than those in the Bamboo Lab material, as they are called micro, so smaller than 5 micrometers in diameter. We'll take a look at this under the microscope and see if visually there's any size difference. Nylon 6 is also known as PA6 and it's a widely used engineering plastic. This Onyx is what we are considering to be the engineering grade filament in this video. Previously, we looked at the safety data sheet for the Bamboo Lab PLA carbon fiber dated 2023. The key detail here was the percent by weight of the carbon fiber and the filament, which was 5 to 10 percent for the PLA. This information was a lot harder for me to find for the onyx material. So after locating, this one I learned is from 2016 and scrolling down to composition and information on ingredients, we can see that the percent by weight is is proprietary. So I tried getting in contact with um, somebody at Mark Forge to see if they would answer this for me. I wasn't able to get a hold of anybody in the couple of days that I tried. After a lot more digging, I found this safety data sheet. It is still the Onyx filament issued in 2018. And if we scroll to the composition, to the composition information, instead of two materials, we have three: the nylon, the carbon, and the caprolactam, which we'll talk about this in a second. But we'll notice here that percentages are listed in weight by weight. The carbon sits at a 10 to 20 percent makeup of the filament, which if we remember the bamboo labs, there is a potential where this onyx material has significantly more fibers in it than the PLA, which makes the close-up shots of the filament we're about to see very interesting. Now, what is this third ingredient exactly? Caprolactam. Taking a quick look at the Wikipedia page for this additive, we scroll down to uses and learn that almost all production of caprolactam goes into the manufacturing of nylon 6, which the onyx material is nylon 6 based. To learn more, let's visit the internet's know-it-all, ChatGPT. What is the role of caprolactam in nylon 6 based 3D printer filament that is infused with chopped carbon fibers? So it seems like caprolactam is used to actually create the nylon 6, which is the base polymer in the filament, nylon 6 derived from caprolactam. It does also allow for good adhesion between the polymer matrix and the carbon fibers, and it offers good thermal stability, which is important when extruding the filament through a hot nozzle. More you know. The composite system is able to inlay continuous fibers within a 3D printed part. Thank you. 
and these continuous fibers come on their own filament-like spools. Mark Forge offers carbon fiber inlays as well as Kevlar and fiberglass. In the microscope close-up, we'll take a look at the carbon fiber and fiberglass inlays as well. So this is a close-up of the fiberglass inlay. And here's a close-up at the carbon fiber. They're both very stiff because they're coated in something to make it stiff and make it easier to load them into the dual extruding system. I snapped the carbon fiber inlay and we can still see that the snapped area is quite spiky from the fibers. There isn't as much skin transfer from these inlays because they are coated with something on the outside. The nylon was very flexy and pretty difficult to break. Here's a close-up of the tip of the onyx material. After snipping it, we can still see some loose fibers. Here is a close-up of the end of the onyx filament that I was able to break off. Definitely the rough break, you can see a little bit more spikiness from the exposed fibers than when you snip it, but it is nothing in comparison to the PLA carbon fiber. The onyx, as we remember in the data sheet, has a higher fiber count by weight than the PLA, but also the fibers are micro-sized, assumed smaller than the ones in the PLA. At the time of filming these clips, the only prints I had from the Mark Forge were a few test calibration prints, so that's what I used. The machine was in the process of being calibrated by a visiting technician and had not been fully set up yet. These calibration prints in the onyx material still give us enough insights of what the fibers look like after heated extrusion. Taking a close-up look at the calibration prints I have in the onyx material, obviously the extrusions look very rough. On the edge of the print, we can see that the extrusion has some spikiness from exposed fibers. Nothing too intense. It seems like the onyx had more of a spiky outside than what I was able to see on the PLA tree frog. Here's another calibration print. It's just a very thick extrusion out of the Mark Forge nozzle. And looking at it from a side view, there's a lot of spiky texture from those microfibers and it's probably accentuated because it is a very, very thick extrusion. So a lot more fibers are present here in this print than a typical 0.4 millimeter bead width. And we can see on the edges, it still has some spiky texture from those micro carbon fibers. I rubbed a clean finger on the surface of this test print to see what the fiber transfer would be like. Surprisingly, it didn't feel spiky. It's a lot harder to pinpoint the carbon fibers from the onyx material. That larger one up there, I don't believe is from the onyx. This visually tells me that the fibers in the onyx are significantly smaller in both length and what appears to be diameter than the ones in the PLA. In this clip, you can kind of see the very, very small fibers that visually prove that the ones in the onyx are significantly smaller than the ones that were in the PLA. That'll be in our discussion. Let's summarize some of our findings today. So in this video, we compared PLA-based carbon fiber to nylon-6 carbon fiber, and we saw that the nylon-6 was able to hold its fibers better, especially after extrusion, and we noticed this based on the fiber transfer of me rubbing my finger onto the print and looking at the amount of fibers left on my fingertip. There was also an added ingredient in our onyx material, the engineering grade material we considered, the caprolactam. As we remember, in the safety data sheet, there was three ingredients, the PA6 or the nylon 6, the microtrop carbon fibers, and caprolactam. This caprolactam, as we researched through ChatGPT, actually helps hold the fibers in the filament a lot better. So there's that added piece that the PLA carbon fiber did not have. Another point of discussion is the size of the carbon fibers, and we saw this directly in two places during our visual analysis. When we looked at the end of the snap pieces of filament, And then when we looked at the fiber transfer,
the PLA carbon fiber as the what we assume typical chopped carbon fiber size and then the Mark Forge filament was being advertised with the micro carbon fibers. Weight by weight comparison is another thing we need to note. Recalling back to the data sheets, the PLA carbon fiber had a 5 to 10 percent whereas the onyx had a 10 to 20 percent, meaning although the onyx material had the micro carbon fibers smaller in comparison to the PLA, there's probably actually more carbon fiber by weight in the onyx material than in the PLA. And last but not least, engineering versus hobby materials are not necessarily manufactured to the same standards. When it comes to cheap rolls you can buy off of Amazon or ones that aren't held to a certain quality standard can have varying properties roll to roll. With things like onyx, Mark Forge is marketing it as an engineering material that is strong enough with the continuous composite fibers to replace aluminum machine parts. With that in mind, it's important for the engineering filament to have consistent properties meaning the quality control for how materials are mixed and the weight percents are probably more consistent than a cheap roll that I'm buying right off of Amazon. All in all, I would say this was a successful visual analysis and it definitely put some things into light in terms of the fiber transfer from materials that are carbon fiber filled. This is a material you have to really be considerate of. Also, when working on a project where you're considering using a carbon fiber filament, compare the mechanical properties of the filament that's not fiber filled to the one that's fiber filled and see if the slight improvements even are relevant to your application. And although a given, of course, be mindful of what you're touching during and after handling carbon fiber filaments, especially after realizing what the fiber transfer is like of the raw filament and then the prints after extrusion. All right, that basically wraps it all up. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.